So now in this final look at the skeletal muscle and its structure, we'll entitle the next flowchart Skeletal Muscle 3. And what you should be very comfortable, comfortable with thus far is the fact that skeletal muscle is highly organized. It's arranged in a very specific way where we have the skeletal muscle, the large structure, and within it, the muscle fibers, and within those, the myofibrils, and within them, the sarcomeres. So this very specific arrangement of sarcomeres, myofibrils, muscle fibers, skeletal muscle, be as comfortable as I am saying that, um, is defined for a following reason. It's basically to show what happens during muscle contraction. So what we're going to state is that during muscle contraction, you're going to work with this hierarchy. You're going to understand and look at how the specific and highly organized arrangement of cells and subunits of cells works to contract a muscle. And to contract a muscle simply just means to move that muscle. And moving that muscle is all a major goal uh, of doing a musculoskeletal action. So during muscle contraction, this is what we're going to highlight and notice. And we really need to be very clear with this um, idea. In this process, you're going to have a thin actin, because remember, we always associate thin filament with actin, and also its partner, the thick myosin. Keep that arrangement very, very clear. Thin actin and thick myosin. Both of these are filaments, right? They're both contractile filaments. What they're going to do during contraction is slide. They will slide past one another. So keep this in mind. They're going to just slip and slide past one another. And in order to do this, in order to go uh, uh, past one another in this sliding arrangement, you have to have the following. You need what are going to be termed connections. These connections will be highlighted a little bit later to each other. But also, in order, to, uh, in order to slide past one another, not only do you need to be connected to one another, you need to make sure that some of the old connections that are allowing you to stay together, some of those old connections need to break. You need to have this breaking of connections, and then simultaneously, you need to have this formation of new connections. Some new connections are going to form. Some old connections break, and in response to some old connections breaking, some new connections form. Overall, when both of these things happen simultaneously during muscle contraction, as we'll see, you're going to see the thick and thin myosin filaments slide past one another. This is the overall mechanism of how they do it. There's a lot more details to this, and I assure you this will be a lot clearer once we actually look at the theory and model behind how this happens. Just keep this as an overall idea in your head for right now. Now, also during muscle contraction, what we need to notice and need to absolutely understand is the overall result. Before we even look at the specifics of the action, let's look at the overall result, because this is a big, big idea. And it is the following. Contraction, to contract, means to get shorter. And in order to do that in the muscle, the functional unit, which is the sarcomere, that basic functional unit of contraction, will get shorter. That's the overall result. Because if many sarcomeres get shorter, that means many myofibrils get shorter. That means many muscle fibers get shorter. That means that the skeletal muscle as a whole gets shorter. So when you're contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing, doing any action with muscles, it's all about contractions and relaxations. The beginning of that process to change and cause movement is all about contracting. The sarcomere is the functional unit that does that. It gets shorter. The sarcomere therefore contracts. How does it do this? The overall result is dictated by the following uh, visual understanding, visual result, I should state. This is going to happen when the distance the distance between the two things that denote a sarcomere, which are what? The Z lines, right? The Z lines from Z line to Z line creates one sarcomere. If that distance between the Z lines gets shorter, that's when the sarcomere will get shorter. So the distance between Z lines is going to shorten. And when this shortens, you get a shortened sarcomere, thus you will get an overall muscle contraction. Contraction means to get shorter. But the big, big thing you have to understand here is the following. 
and I'll try to make this as clear as possible. As the distance between the z-lines gets shorter, please, please note that the length, the length, not the distance, but the length of the filaments, which filaments are we talking about here? Actin and myosin. Both of them have lengths, inherent lengths that they, can, that they have. The lengths of these filaments does not change. Absolutely does not change. You have to understand this idea to understand muscle contraction. This whole lecture basically is based off of this statement. Length of filaments, actin and myosin, thick and thin, does not change. Now, how is this going to happen? What's going to change is the amount of overlap. So state the following right underneath this. Only the amount of overlap, because remember, what did I say about the sarcomere? It's the basic functional unit that will have this overlapping of actin and myosin. The amount of overlap, how much actin overlaps with the myosin is what's going to change, not the actual size or length of actin and myosin. So how can we look at this? Let me try to give you a basic visual understanding of this. Let's say we have a z-line here and a z-line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an actin, just like we've done before, actin that goes out from the z-line, and that's our actin plus the z and the z. So this is our z-line, z-line. Those are our actin molecules, and what's in between them? That's, of course, myosin. So let's draw myosin as a thick filament. Okay, so I'll draw myosin about this size right here. Okay, and I'll draw myosin right underneath as well because it's overlapping with actin right over here. Right now, what can you state about the amount of overlap? How much does actin overlap with myosin? You see this empty space here? It basically doesn't even overlap. But what if I cause these Z lines to shorten? What if I take these Z lines and put them like, let's say, right over here? And I put this other Z line right over here. This is what happens during muscle contraction. Distance between Z lines is going to shorten. The distance from point A over here to point B is whatever. Why? But point A to point B over here is shorter. Notice that the Z line's here and the Z line's here. Now the Z line is here and here. We have a shorter distance to cover. This is contraction. But now we have to be very careful. How should I draw the actin? Should I make it longer, shorter, or the same? This actin molecule here, which is a filament, has to stay this exact amount of length. And that's what I'll try to represent here. Hopefully, that's about the same length there. Hopefully, that was a pretty good representation. I'll do the same thing here. This is going to be about the same length. I'm going to make sure that you can just pretend at least that their lengths are about the same, okay? So this actin, this actin where the pointer is, all three, all six actin molecules have about the same length as the top and the bottom. The only thing that's changed is the distance from Z to Z. So the myosin, which is also a filament, is going to follow the same exact pattern where I'm going to draw the myosin at the same exact size. So I'm going to try to draw it just like how I drew it up there. So same size, make sure that it's thick like this. Okay, so that's about the same size as the one up there. And then the same thing over down here. Okay, so what do you notice? What has changed and what has stayed the same? What has stayed the same, what I tried to do at least, was keep the size of the myosin. Notice how this is about the same size, the same size of the actins, the same, but the distance between Z and Z has shortened. So this distance right here has shortened compared to this distance and the amount of overlap. Look how much overlap is here, basically from this point to this point. That's how much overlap we had. Now look, we have a decent amount of overlap here. The overlap between this myosin and this actin right above it, this myosin and this actin right above it, has definitely changed. How does this happen? Why does this happen? What causes this to happen? That's all going to be highlighted by what is known as the sliding, notice the word slide here, very purposeful, sliding filament theory, which we'll cover in the next couple of flowcharts.